Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing my January 2023 reading wrap-up. So first wrap-up of the year. How, how exciting is that? I can't even believe it's 2023 and we're one month down already. So happy February guys and we're just gonna go and hop into my reviews. I read 11 different books this month and I have a good combination of some historical fiction, mysteries, paranormal, and nonfiction. So let's hop in. So one of the first books I read this month was Caramel Crush by Jen McKinley. This is part of my favorite cupcake bakery mystery series. This takes place in Scottsdale, Arizona. Our main character Mel and her best friend Angie run fairy tale cupcakes and they get into different hijinks and mysteries throughout the time. This one is particularly fun because an old college friend of Mel's named Diane contacts her and asks her She's basically calling in a favor and you get to learn about what the favor was for and everything, which was really interesting. But she asks her to make caramel cupcakes that have like breakup symbols on them and to deliver them to her fiance while she is on the phone so she can hear her fiance's reaction as she breaks up with him via cupcake, which is pretty terrible. Um, I'll say that's pretty awful. Unfortunately, Mel finds the fiance dead and of course Diane looks really guilty so she asks Mel to step in and try to solve the mystery. This was really good. This was one of my favorites actually out of the whole series and I've read almost all of like the 15 or so books in this series. This is probably my top three. I really liked this one. I thought it was great. You can jump into the series at any point. I read them in order for the most part, but you can jump in at any time. There's always cupcake recipes included, and this was just a really solid mystery. I really liked learning about Diane. She was a really complex, interesting character from Mel's past, and I found that really interesting. So this was a five-star read for me. Okay, this next book made me cry. I was on booktube and I saw this recommendation and I was like, you know what, let me give it a try. I don't read a lot of graphic novels, but I wanted to give it a try. And this is called Wash Day Diaries by Jamila Rouser and Robin Smith. And I checked this out from my library, so I'm just covering the the library's name there. But this made me cry. So basically this is this beautiful collection of four women's stories. I'm gonna read how it's kind of described in the back. So it's five interconnected short comics follow four friends through the ups and downs of their daily lives in the Bronx, from self-care to spilling the tea at hours long salon appointment to healing family riffs. Each story uses hair routines as a window into who these young women are and how they care for each other. And this was beautiful. The artwork in this is, is gorgeous. It's just so... I'm just, I can't, I mean, this is like, look at the beauty of this artwork. It's so colorful and just stunning. I absolutely love it. And these women care for each other and it's shown through like different hair routines and whatnot. And it was just so beautiful. I loved learning about each of their styles and how they do their hair because each of them do have very different ways that they style and care for their hair. I love seeing their relationship. I loved each of their individual stories. I cried during one of the stories because it just hit me really hard. Um, that was the story Bright Side if you're familiar with this, but it was a gorgeous comic and the the illustrations in this, like look at the richness of the colors and everything. It's incredible. I will have it, all of this linked down below if you want to check any of these out, but I highly recommend this. It just completely like T tore me to bits. It was the most beautiful slice of life moments. Definitely had some harder topics, so it's not like completely cozy, but it still leaves you on a cozy note and you feel just rejuvenated and like, I don't know, just really fills, like fills your cup, I would say. I really loved it. Another cozy I read this month was Comic Sans Murder by Paige Shelton. This is book three and the final book in the Dangerous Type Mystery series, which I'm really sad it's over. I'm reading, I, I love Paige Shelton's Scottish Bookshop series, which she is continuing, but this one only has three releases. It's an older series, so I don't think it's coming out with more as far as I can tell. And this involves our main character, Claire, and she works at a type store with her grandfather. And they, it's called The Rescued Word, which I really like. And they rescue typewriters, they fix them. They also do like stationery, custom printing, kind of anything involving type and typewriters. It's very interesting. You can tell the author really does her research because the information she includes makes it very informative and I don't know much about typewriters personally so it was really interesting to learn more about that. But this one involves a very unique mystery I would say. Basically a this is a ski town. It's, it takes place in Star City and it's a ski town and a foot is found in a ski boat and there's there's no body with it. Just a foot. So 
a little morbid, a little a little creepy for sure, but that's found and it's reported to the police and they're trying to find the body and Claire gets involved in the mystery as per usual. There's also an interesting side character named Nathan Grimes and he's kind of like, kind of gives me like Stephen King-esque vibes, like he's a horror writer. Um, and he's a very interesting character who's kind of borrowing different typesets and using the rescued words like printing press and stuff to do different typesets and whatnot for his like research for his next book so he gets involved. There is so many interesting aspects. You also get to learn a lot about Claire and her past because there's like a high school reunion going on. This was just a really interesting like layered mystery that I really liked and I'm sad because it seemed like there was supposed to be more of these books because it left some like side plots like like, it seemed like it was building up to something, and as far as I know, this is the last book, so I think they cut it, and it wasn't supposed to be the last book, so I'm really sad. But otherwise, it was a good mystery. I would recommend the series still. I really enjoyed it. So I actually ended up DNFing this book. I was trying to do a physical TBR reading vlog, which I ended up nixing this month because it just it didn't work out too well. But this is one I was reading for, and it just, I didn't like it. I, I only got like 40 pages in. It's called The Last Suppers by Diane Mott Davidson. It's a culinary mystery. And this is a, like a couple books into the series. It is my, it's book four. It's my first book from the series, but most cozies you can jump in at any point. And this is just the one I happen to own. So I wanted to give it a try and like get it off my, my TBR card because it's been sitting there for a while. The premise was interesting. There wasn't anything about the premise that bothered me. I just didn't care. Like I was really struggling to get myself interested in the mystery. And for me at least that tends to be a bad sign because a murder mystery should be kind of interesting like it's it's a pretty dramatic like plot line to have a murder happen right so like if I'm not interested in it I'm having to kind of force myself through the book then I'm that's usually a pretty good sign for me so I ended up DNFing it I just wasn't really drawn to the writing style or the the plot line really so unfortunately that will that was a no for me one that I absolutely adored this month this is historical fiction it is a cozy mystery this is cupboards all bared by Patricia Meredith this is the second book in the Spokane clock tower mystery series and this takes place in 1901 Spokane Washington and it follows multiple narratives like the first book in the series which I have I have up here, the first book was Butcher, Baker, Candlestick Taker. This one here follows some of the same characters from the first book. And you definitely, a side note, most cozy mysteries I talk about, you can jump in at any time if you want to. These you should definitely read in order or you will be very confused. But I really enjoyed this. I Sometimes the second book in a series, you know, kind of takes a dip after the excitement of the first book. But this one really kept the momentum going. I thought it was really interesting. I loved learning more about the characters, seeing how their relationships were developing. We really got to follow along some detectives more in this one, which was really interesting. I also loved a specific character, uh, Roslyn or Roslyn, I believe it's, is it Roslyn? I'm gonna say, but she was amazing. She was the coolest character. I absolutely adored her. I think she was so fantastic. I loved her and Marion's relationship. I can't say too much about the plot without giving away things for the first book, so I'm going to leave it at that. But if you like historical fiction, I would recommend these. The mystery is really great in both of these. Very interesting. It's well thought out. Lots of clues. If you like multiple points of views, if you like learning about kind of interesting niche topics like clock making or just different things like that, I find that the author for this has really done her research. Everything is really fleshed out. You really feel like you're walking the streets of Spokane in 1901 and I love that. So I would recommend this. I have one more book in this series to finish and that's all that is currently out but there are more coming out in the future. So definitely check these out. They are fan just fantastic. Love them. I read a couple thrillers this month as well. The first one was The Family Game by Katherine Stedman and this, this book was thrilling. I mean, I was attached to it. I was flipping pages, but ultimately I was disappointed, unfortunately. I gave it, I think, about two stars on Goodreads. It wasn't my favorite and not because it wasn't a page turner. It was absolutely a page turner. The problem with it is I got to the ending. I got to the, the reveal and the explanation and everything. And I just sat there and was like, with this reveal in mind, isn't this whole book unnecessary? Like, I just sat there and was like, couldn't this whole situation have been avoided so easily? I was like, why did it, get, why did it get to this point? Like, why didn't this, you know, particular character, like, the, there was just so many ways that the whole, like, thrilling portion of this book could have been prevented and all of, like, the scariness and stuff. 
and I couldn't understand why the book was even necessary with that explanation. Like the book, the reveal basically like undid the plot for me. It, it didn't, it didn't mesh. Like it, it made the plot itself kind of almost unnecessary because the reveal, it, it shouldn't have happened. Like the plot that we followed shouldn't have happened at least in the way I interpreted it. Otherwise, the writing was great. I mean, it was thrilling. I was on the edge of my seats, but it just was really strange. Um, the only other thing I will say that made me very uncomfortable about the book was that the main character is basically marrying into this family, and they're very, very wealthy and rich, and it's called The Family Game because the fiancé's family, his family, is very very elite, very wealthy, used to getting away with whatever they want because of their money, and they play games with each other, and these are not normal games. And the games were fascinating. I loved that part. But the problem I had was the main character, her relationship, so she's the fiancé, and she's being introduced to this family. She had the creepiest thoughts about her father-in-law, like, like very romantic and physical thoughts about her father-in-law, and I was just sitting there like, I was completely, I was really grossed out. I was like, this is really, like, gross. I was very, like, acutely uncomfortable. It was mostly just in, like, one chapter, but I was like, this is really uncomfortable. I was very uncomfortable, so if that would make you uncomfortable, just keep that in mind. But that's not the only reason I gave it a low rating. The primary reason is that the reveal just, like, undid the plot for me. Like, it didn't, it made the plot unnecessary, and that really confused me, and I was just really frustrated with that. The other one I read this month was called The Personal Assistant by Kimberly Bell. This one was a little bit better. However, I felt like the ending was easy to call, and I also feel like one of the characters in the ending, like one of the side characters, had done something that was just so out of character. It made no sense. Like, I just sat there and was like, that, with everything I know after reading this book, I would not this, I, like, I couldn't accept that this character would have done this. Like, it, it made so little sense to me. Um, that one is basically about a social media influencer whose social media account is, like, hacked, and basically she gets, like, all this hate. People are, like, uh, you know, going to her family in real life. They're, like, flaming them with messages. There's all this mess, and it comes out with different secrets, and her personal assistant, who is the only one who has access to her accounts, is missing. It's very interesting. I love the premise, but the ending, I was like, this is... It was so obvious. I was so upset. I was so frustrated, because I really thought it was going to be something good, and it just... It left me hanging. So thrillers this month weren't so good for me. A uh, cozy mystery that I loved was The Murder in a Sky Scottish Shire. This is written by Tracy Hall and my mom got me this book in December and I love this. This is the first book in the... Okay, it doesn't actually have the name of the series on here because it's the first book. I'll put it on the screen. But this is the first book in the series and I adored this. This was incredible. Our main character's name is Paisley. She's 28 years old. She owns a knitting shop and she does custom orders for things like sweaters and scarves, but she also sells yarn, thus like all these organizers here in the back. She has a Scottish Terrier. Love it. I absolutely love it. And she has a like eight or nine year old son named Brody and she just gets hit with everything all at once. She finds out that an employee of hers that was coming back to work for her ends up being murdered. She finds out that her grandfather was sleeping in the park, like her estranged grandfather, so he suddenly is like living with her. There's all this stuff going on, but I love the fi family dynamics within this book. Like seeing her relationship with her son, incredibly sweet. Seeing her relationship develop with her grandfather was really interesting. The mystery was very well thought out. I loved the execution of the mystery and like the, everything, it was just fascinating. And I loved how much initiative she took. She really didn't set ba like sit back and just like rest on her laurels and wait for clues to fall in her lap. She was really an ambitious, like aggressive sleuth who was going after things. And I really enjoyed that. I thought it was interesting to learn more about knitting. I'm not somebody who knits. It's not something I'm particularly interested in, but I do find it very cozy and inviting. So I loved hearing about that. If you like a family driven mystery where there's like a lot of just family warmth and coziness, this was really great. I loved that. And it was just, it was just a really good cozy. I was really excited because this was the first in a series and it was just, I was immediately sucked in with it. So this next cozy I liked. It's actually on my 15 cozy mystery series I want to start this year list and I'll link that video above if you want to check it out. But I didn't love it as much as I wanted to. And this is by Deborah Senfelder and this is The Uninvited Corpse. 
And again, it's a library book, so I'm covering my, my library's name on there. I'll put a full picture on screen so you can see it unobstructed. But basically, this follows a food blogger named Hope. She's recently had a bunch of messes in her life. She's quit a job as a magazine editor. She's had a big, like, reality TV show, f like, like fail, where she loses a competition and she's embarrassed. She's not doing great, but she's food blogging. She's back in her hometown. Things are going okay. She's trying to establish her home and everything again. And tragedy strikes when she goes to this event with her sister and somebody ends up de dead there. And this is this somebody is a realtor who's known for being very aggressive, very flirtatious. She's got a lot of enemies. People don't love her. And unfortunately, Claire's uh, Claire, Hope's sister, is actually suspected of the murder because she is also a realtor and so they were competitors. So Hope is on the case because her sister is really looking like she's on the hook for this murder. It's not looking good. There's like different fights that people have like reported. It's it's not good for her sister so she gets involved with the case. My issue with this was that it felt like there was a little bit of fluffiness and not and I know cozies have like slice of life moments. That's one of the cozy elements but this really seemed a little overly fluffy and like the middle of the book dragged a little bit for me because it just felt like we weren't making any progress on the mystery and so I kind of that's that's what got me so I gave it like a three and a half stars it was a good read I plan on reading more um in this series if I can but it wasn't like an exceptional amazing one like this one here I absolutely love I'm definitely going to read more of but this one is one that I will hopefully read more of I enjoyed but the pacing was just a little bit off for me. It was a little slow. A cozy I loved was A Fatal Glow by Valerie Wilson Wesley. This is part of the Odessa Jones mystery series and it's book two in the series. This is a paranormal cozy mystery so the main character Odessa has some like kind of psychic abilities. She can see these things called glimmers or glows. It's kind of like being able to sense and like temporarily see glimpse glimpses of like someone's aura and like their emotional state with different colors around them. So it reminds me of auras maybe not exactly but that's kind of the general gist of it and she works as a real estate agent and she also has her own catering business so she gets this really great offer in this book to cater this large party and she's very excited because this will be a really big deal get her a lot of exposure for her catering business until somebody at the party drops dead and unfortunately this is not putting a good light on her catering business. She's a little bit of a suspect at first, but then it kind of shifts to some other people. There's a lot of people who might have wanted this person dead, like there's, you know, an ex-wife, there's all these different messes going on, lots of family drama, lots of people at the party who could have wanted this person gone, and lots of people who had the means and the motive, so it's just a really messy case. I really like Odessa's empathy for other characters. She's very much an empathetic person, even the most unlikable characters she really tries to get to like understand them and to sympathize with them even when it's difficult for her and I really like that about her character I think she's probably one of the most empathetic characters I've read in a while she's really great at that she really takes her time and thinks about things deeply I really enjoy her as a character and I'm really excited for book three coming out this year the other one I read recently was Steep to Death by Gretchen Rue and this is another kind of paranormal cozy mystery basically our main character is a descendant of somebody who is rumored to be a witch um, and her aunt has passed away and she is in charge of this tea shop that also sells books so like kind of a bookish tea shop it's really fun beautiful setting I love learning about some of the other employees in the shop they're really great colorful characters and there's also this cat named Bob who is just really chubby and adorable and I love I love him <laughs> absolutely love him as you can see on the cover there but she's starting to learn a little bit about her aunt and like who she was as a person and also kind of reliving a lot of childhood memories because she spent time in her aunt's house as a child and it just it's really interesting to see her dig up family like family secrets and like memories and stuff and basically a murder occurs and she starts to try to get involved with it try to figure it out see if it's linked at all to like her aunt and like past and she also uses she starts to realize that she might also have some magical abilities of her own so you get to kind of learn about that it's very interesting the tea is kind of enchanted in some ways possibly it's it's very interesting I don't want to give too much away but it is interesting it is a good paranormal cozy mystery it was very 
cozy, it was warm, I liked the magical element, it didn't overpower the entire book or take over the mystery, but it was interesting enough to keep my attention and add just that extra something to it that I really enjoyed. And the characters in this one were definitely heartwarming, I really liked reading about them. Alright, and last one we have is called Last Rites by Laura Levine. This is the second book in the Jane Austen mystery series that is Jane with an I in there, and this follows a very comedic freelance writer, and she has basically been like she's gotten a job as and like a writer on like this kind of sitcom like reality show and it's it's a hoot this is a very very satirical very comedic cozy mystery so basically the whole book like they're mocking everybody so if you're easily <laughs> offended maybe not um you may not like this book as much but when you read it from the point of view that this character is kind of like mocking everybody like it's a very comedic satirical take on things I think it's like it can be kind of humorous sometimes the jokes go a little far for me but for the most part I think they're funny I think it it says a lot about life and the character is very blunt and on honest which I think is refreshing but basically somebody on the set of the tv show dies which puts Jane's job on the line and she's also just looking at all the drama, there's all these different competing actresses and actors who could have wanted this person dead, it could have been like a tragic accident, like there's just all these different things that it could could have happened and of course it happened during the first script that she like submitted for an episode as well. So it was the first episode that she had written that was going to go live that this person died. But basically if you do like a very like loud comedic like you like to read it like a comedy kind of a cozy mystery this one is definitely very heavy on the comedy portion it's very fun it's very punchy it definitely mocks like everybody like just across the board nobody is safe from her like mocking kind of tone in her head including herself she's very self-deprecating as well so it's just kind of a fun quirky book I don't know if I love this series, like if I want to read all, I think there's like 19 books in this series, I don't think I'm going to read all 19, but I would definitely pick one up here and there and enjoy it because it just, it's very lighthearted, it's very heavy with the comedy, it, it reads almost like you're reading something from a comedian's perspective versus a writer, but I think that's funny and I like her freelance writing position just because it's interesting and I'm a freelance writer myself so I like, I always like to read someone with a similar profession, it's interesting to me, but I definitely enjoyed this one, I gave it like three and a half stars out of five, I didn't think the mystery was as good as the first book but it was still solid it was still fun I enjoyed the read it was lighthearted, and yeah I enjoyed that series thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe I do post new book content every single week especially in the mystery genre and let me know down below in the comments what did you read this month would you recommend it would you not have you read any of the books I mentioned today what were your thoughts on them I love hearing your opinions even if they're different from mine and I hope you guys have a good rest of your day don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in my next video bye